All right, it is, uh, I don't know, it's 11 something. Let me check that. In case I forget to take any more sailing videos. I'm fairly notorious for. Here we go. We're sailing away. Downtown. Headed out uh, around your Buena Island. Not gonna go right across the strat, uh, the slot. We're gonna go more across Southampton Shoal. Let's see whether it can be a little calmer right there. So far, it's pretty calm, and I'm fighting in a uh, flood tide. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm fine. As long as I get across the slot before two o'clock, I'd be really pretty happy. Take a video and I just accidentally jived, but uh, somewhere back there is a city, and uh, somewhere behind me is a boat, but set anchor, which uh, I'm on a collision course with currently. No, I'm not. It's going to be in front of me. All right, it's getting a little more adventurous. Fog has burned off uh, at least the low, below the fog. So I can see across the bay now, and uh, I don't want a video too long because when it's like this, it's easy to capsize. New Bay Bridge, your plain island back there is uh, 1.30. A little behind schedule, but not so bad. Looks like I'll be hitting the slot. Uh, <laughs> Right around 2-ish, maybe, I don't know, 2.30, somewhere in there. It's going to be probably an exciting ride. Holy shit, that was a little bit of a wild ride. Made it across from uh, Treasure Island back there. And, uh, oh boy, plenty windy and wet. But fun, windy and wet. It's a... Uh, Almost three o'clock and I'm uh, stopping on Angel Island. I'm here on Angel Island to get a snack and uh, take a break before I cross Raccoon Strait and find my camping spot. So here I am at the same beach as last year. Uh, having my first rum and pineapple in a long time. And i um, wondering what has happened in the last year and what the difference is between now and Last time I stayed at this beach, obviously I've been here before, I knew where I was going, I'm kind of glad that I knew where I was going. I had company for a little while, but I left just a few minutes ago, and uh, I forgot how sandy it was. I don't know. Seems pretty nice. I'm just gonna focus on enjoying it now that the short view is gone. I don't remember the beach being quite this steep last year, which is a little little change of Rooney, but I guess we'll see. I hope I'm dry tonight. Find assortment of stuff. Bay and my entertainment center and my rum pineapple. Boy, it is peaceful as fuck out here, and it occurs to me. I have largely forgotten how to be peaceful. To do nothing. Take my time. What are these things as an adult? Alright, it's uh, about 9 o'clock. Sun is down. And it's time for bed. This is my bed, uh, yeah, as you can see, 
deluxe accommodations. I'm gonna spread out this tarp right here and uh, well there's a little bit of a puddle still but oh well. Spread out. Good morning. One of the key bits of uh, sailing up the delta, key bits of navigation, is a sail with a flood tide. That way you're not battling the ebb and the current of the Sacramento as you're heading upstream. Uh, so that's why I time this uh, trip with a full moon so that I get nice midday flood tides to carry me up the river. I uh, made a little chart here. It said three, two, one, zero. As you can see, the zero is almost covered up, and the, I added a one, two, three, so we might be going on three, or we might be going a little bit sooner if I get my act together. It's only 8 a.m. It's not much wind yet, but it might be a uh, this is a smidge of wind. A little bit of movement up there. So we'll see how quickly I can pull my act together. Probably will be another hour. We've got a little bit of a breeze picking up. I think this breeze is saying, sail me, sail me. All right, 9, 10 a.m. and I am ready to set sail. I'm sailing away from camp spot of night number one. Mount Tam, the Sleeping Maiden, although I have heard that the Sleeping Maiden legend is maybe not actually a Native American legend. This is the boat part of the video called Boats Come in All Shapes and Sizes. San Francisco just visible in the haze back there. My polarized sunglasses apparently help. I don't even know if they're polarized, but they help. But you can see. The big one is, of course, the Salesforce Tower now. Not the Transamerica. doing a wall being 2.8 knots <clears throat> as we head toward East Brother Light, situated between Marin and Richmond. This was a lighthouse, still is a lighthouse, but now is a bed and breakfast as well, and is uh, famous for uh, the job search whenever uh, the position of innkeeper comes up. Pretty sweet gig. Now run by a young couple. Uh, one of my, well, Somebody has to be a real good cook and hot, good at hospitality and somebody has to be a certified captain. Not the easiest combo to come by but they came by it. I read about this lighthouse, East Brother Light, and uh, the rest of the lighthouses in the Bay Area in a book called Guardians of the Golden Gate, which was uh, given to me from the collection of my mother's boyfriend after he passed away. And here we pass 
the North Bay's dirty little secret, the refineries. If it wasn't for the gas and pollutants that these things throw up, this would be some primo real estate. As it is, it's actually getting built up around here, despite the health concerns. Point Penola lunch break, 1.30, Wednesday. Ahead you can see uh, the Carquinez Strait and Carquinez Bridge. I'm not going to go through there tonight. I'm going to stop on Mare Island. And uh, Mare Island's dead ahead. Uh, the wind's picked up. Not too crazy right now. I imagine in the next hour as we sail toward the island it's going to get a little brisker. And then after that, you know, it'll start glowing like crazy, but hopefully I won't be out then. Uh, this is about as windy as as I feel comfortable filming. We'll see if I get any more action shots than this. Ten minutes to four, and I've arrived in Vallejo. Windy, as usual, here on Mare Island. Learned last year that this beach has uh, got a lot of wake and uh, quite a bit of tide, so I'm going to come clear up off the beach on this little path of skids I made. I saw that the oxalis has uh, developed a tear right here. There was already one that I repaired with tape. I'm going to tape, tape this one again. Alright, maybe not my prettiest repair ever. Got some creases in this side, but it is repaired and ready for tomorrow. That's where I was last year and uh, it turned out to not be dry all night, so... With the exception of perhaps some Spring flooding, I think I'm okay here. Alright, it is uh, quarter past five. This audio is probably going to be terrible because of the wind here, but... Uh, I was thinking about going for a walk. And I might still at some point, but honestly I'm just enjoying sitting here doing nothing right now. The sailing is... Um, keeps you busy. Oh, hell yeah. It looks like the Vallejo Yacht Club is about to do a Wednesday night beer can race. Or maybe is doing a Wednesday night beer can race. I get to have a little show. See who puts on the fastest boat. That little one is looking pretty damn quick. Or what it is. Oh, there's a bunch coming out. This is going to be good. I bet, I wonder how much of it I'm going to be able to see. Looks like they're doing a little zigzag between these two markers here. I opened up this can of peaches, singing it. Uh, whoa, that's a big can, but I'll tell you what, it was not hard to eat. Looks like the race is, uh, spinnaker optional. They're doing a bunch of stuff down there by the bridge. I think they were already racing when they passed by, though. I'm hoping that the finish line will be back at the club. That would be awesome. Wrapping up, it looks like they're headed back this way. Maybe they will finish up the Napa River in front of their club. 
One, two, three, it looks like uh, the boats that were in the lead on the way out are still in the lead. The little boat is off to the right, just in front of that ferry right now. The big tall one, and then the one with the black sails is to the left of that. Let's see how this goes. Here come the rest of the boats. Bigger boats. Not bothering with spinnakers. Just having a Wednesday night race. Ooh, that guy's having a Wednesday night getting past. I haven't worn two pairs of socks and I can't even tell you how long. It's not really something that you have to do in California. Oh, hi. That's what I was trying to get at right there. I talked to Deb a few minutes ago about uh, how I'm doing and whether or not I might fail tomorrow. I don't know where to camp tomorrow, so this is going into unknown territory for me. <sighs> Hard work, this dinghy camping. Watching the videos, though, it looks pretty fun. Not a bad sunset here. It's an interesting juxtaposition between the industrial and the natural. It's a big refinery over there, a big C&H sugar factory, twin bridges. Mare Island, where I'm sitting, Mare Island used to be a Navy shipyard, oldest one on the west coast from the mid-1800s, but uh, it closed a number of years ago, and it's currently being redeveloped slowly into a golf course and homes, you know, the usual. Oh my god, I was just having the first mosquito attack. I had to run out on this pier to get away from the fuckers. I don't know what I'm going to do. Will they go away? I'll go back maybe when it gets dark and see whether I can get into my camp. Otherwise, I'm going to come and sleep out here. 11.40 and uh, the tide is back up, which is surprising to me. I wouldn't think it would be up for another hour or two. And uh, the full moon is out. I guess it's not that surprising that the tide fall at the moon, but... Hmm. Well, I can tell you what. It is foggy in the city this morning. Because it's... This is the trail of fog, probably leading up the whole bay. It's windy cold morning, but thankfully mosquito free. <laughs> Pretty over there. That was a cold one. Maybe not as cold as last night. It's windy though. A constant struggle to try to keep my tarp from uh, becoming a mosquito haven, even though I kind of think they went away after the wind kicked up. 8 a.m. and the sun is finally peeking out of the clouds. The tide, however, is also uh, on its way out still, or maybe just turning. It's going to be a couple hours before I can get out of here. Got to have this covered up. Here comes Wakerama. It's 10 minutes to 10 and uh, the tide is still pretty damn far out. I don't know if it's getting any further out, but I don't think it's coming back in yet. And it's taken three 
three hours, three and a half hours to get to this point. So it could be another two or three hours before it's in far enough for me to get out of here. Slightly problematic. I have to admit I'm struggling a bit this morning. Wondering whether this should uh, be my last day of sailing on this trip. Well, I just made the call for Deb to come and get me in Pittsburgh today after work. Pittsburgh is uh, still the farthest sail of any day from here. There's projected to be good wind all day long, or at least a lot of wind all day long. Um, so I've got that working to my advantage. I'm still waiting on this tide. It's uh, now... Uh, 10 15 and if it's in in another hour or two hours I mean it's gonna be at least another hour I think it has turned and is starting to come in um, so I'll be underway when I can I feel bad I'm gonna bail and not keep sailing but you know uh, more credit to guys like Webb Childs and Iger Stropnik and Gene Socrates who push on through shit like this and uh, see their vision through. Maybe someday I'll be one of those people or maybe I'll just applaud them uh, as I sail my little dinghy around the bay for overnight trips. <laughs> All right, you know, uh, it looks like I might not hit my goal again, which is to sail and explore the Delta. I mean, I'm making it to the Delta. Well, technically so far I've made it to Carquina Strait, and you can never fucking count anything out in this game. Might not make it to the Delta, but knock on wood, that's where we're headed today. And, uh... Like, I, I was going to go, you know, I scheduled myself several days more to be able to do this, and uh, I'm not. I'm going to bail tonight. I called Deb, and that's it. I'm out, I think. You know, unless, like I said, unforeseen circumstances arise. However, you know, life is long, and uh, the dinghy, the SV Oxalis is not terribly long, uh, nine feet, and um, while she has, uh, you know, more or less enough room on her for me to uh, sleep, not super comfortably, but, you know, I've made it through the night, um, it's, a, it's a challenge, and, um, you know, here's what I was going to say, life is long, you know, and if my goal is to explore the Delta... Uh, I mean, hopefully life is long. Again, unforeseen circumstances, you never fucking know. But if my goal is to explore the Delta, it's nice to still have a goal. So, uh, I can rest easy knowing that. Um, in the time being, it's really nice to have uh, explored the base some and understand that a lot of beauty and excitement out here as well as some spectacularly cold nights. Alright, I'm gonna 
attempt to keep filming throughout the day so we get a little view as to what really happened. At least this video is a little more uh, involved in last year's video, even though I'm doing basically the same trip. All right, 11 a.m. and the uh, tide is approaching where I'll be able to put in. Give it another half an hour, I think I'll be good to go. Um, you know, one thing that I'm getting out of this trip is uh, a lesson in just how to be still and wait and uh, take your time with things and do less, you know? I don't have to pick out a huge goal. I also don't have to do that much in a day. And by waiting here uh, another hour, I'm going to save myself a really nasty slog through some mud. All right, making progress on getting out of here. All right, what I'm going to do is move the oxalis from here over to here because I don't think there's much depth out here for me to dig the uh, dagger board in, and uh, there's a it's a lee shore, so I'm going to be fighting to get out over here. Still pretty much a lee shore, but uh, and also not deep. But I think uh, if I get blown off that away, I will. Uh, at least be headed toward deeper water and not a jetty. I made these markers this morning, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three, and as you can see, it's uh, covered the three and the two, but not the one, zero, one, two, three. So I guess I'm maybe ahead of my hypothetical schedule. All right, it is uh, noon. And uh, we're ready to go. The wind is definitely ready to take us there. It's mowing down uh, as I get away from the mouth of the Napa River there. But still a little bit of a still a little bit of a ride, especially if I don't pay attention. Carquinez Bridge up there, C and H Sugarcane. Sugar Factory. I once wrote a musical about the, called The Barbary Kosher View and uh, it's a historical musical and one of the protagonists uh, was a woman named Alma de Bretville who went on uh, later in her life to, uh, she's the woman on top of the victory statue on Dewey Monument and uh, in Union Square in San Francisco. Later in life, uh, not that late in life, she went on to marry a guy named uh, Adolph Spreckles who owned a sugar company and uh, they say that she coined the term sugar daddy we don't really know if that's true or not but um this his sugar company is gone but this one remains this may be my last video I'm running out of storage space just made it past Benicia it's nice and windy outside Benicia but it's calm here in Honker Bay or one of these. I panicked last year, thought about camping in this spot, uh, but wasn't sure, wasn't sure about my anchoring ability, a hundred other things. Decided to uh, come check it out for lunch today, even though I'm not camping here. Might be doable. Into the home stretch, I think those two power, or uh, two stacks down there, somewhere around Pittsburgh, I need to look at a map. What a great contraposition, this two smokestacks versus this field of windmills. All right, Pittsburgh boat ramp made it to our destination. No deb yet.